On this uh, Saturday uh, midday in the eastern part of the United States, so we are uh, looking at Hurricane Ophelia, which is now the season's sixth major hurricane, and it is passing south of the Azores. Uh, it is going to be uh, headed for Ireland on Monday and the British Isles, uh, the, the rest of the British Isles, uh, England, Scotland, uh, and the surrounding islands uh, later in the day, Monday into Monday night and early Tuesday. So we're going to get right to it and then uh, we'll uh, come back and uh, join you uh, in the chat. Welcome to those of you who are watching from uh, the UK, specifically Ireland. Uh, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, me, I am uh, a New York City area meteorologist and have been for the last 30 years uh, on uh, local television here. And uh, I continue to do that. And uh, we live stream every day here, right here on my YouTube channel. So uh, if uh, you uh, like what you see, uh, by all means, uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, really would appreciate it. And you can join in the conversation. Uh, in the chat right and channel, we have so Ophelia the, as a major uh, hurricane this is the sixth uh, means, uh, major the hurricane button. and uh, it is very rare to have a major hurricane uh, in the chat. Uh, at 35 uh, degrees Ophelia almost 35 degrees north latitude, latitude and longitude at about 27 degrees uh, west the Azores are the islands on the map here right to the north and you can see Ophelia has a well-formed eye uh, that um, symmetric look to it uh, even though water temperatures here are not warm enough to really support a Category 3, the dynamics in the atmosphere are exceptional. Uh, it is uh, quite cool in the highest layers of the atmosphere, and this is allowing for basically a, a warm pocket to form for Ophelia to sit in and, uh, and generate uh, energy to the level of a Category 3. And it's going to pass south and east of the Azores, although there may, they may get tropical storm force winds, it probably will get tropical storm force winds on this island here that is out to the southeast, the island of Santa Maria, and then northeast, northeast bound from there, heading for uh, Ireland, and that will happen on Monday. And uh, when we take a look, I'm going to show you the GFS model of this. Now, Ophelia is going to gradually make a transition over uh, into a powerful non-tropical cyclone, uh, almost uh, yeah, really like a winter type cyclone. And if you look where in the lower left corner here is the representation of Ophelia. Uh, when we uh, start back, and this is by, uh, this is for 6 a.m. Sunday morning, Ireland and England time, uh, it has that sort of concentrated ball of very, very strong winds uh, it, near uh, the circulation center. But as it, we move through time and it makes this transition over into a non-tropical storm, you'll see that the wind field spreads out. The yellow areas, uh, the areas in yellow, uh, and the uh, code here is on the, the legend is on the side here. These are winds and sustained, uh, these are sustained winds. So the yellows are all gales and the red areas are 40 knots or higher. The purple area is 52 knots or higher. And you can see that wind field spreads out. So this is typical of uh, systems that become uh, post-tropical or extra-tropical. And uh, that'll mean there'll be a larger area of gale force winds, but you won't have that very tight area of winds uh, in excess of 100 miles an hour. And when we uh, get to um, midnight, uh, Monday morning, this is where the storm is. You can see it with respect to Ireland and England. It's about... Uh, 300 miles to the south, south uh, east of Ireland, and at uh, 6 a.m. we uh, have it uh, getting even closer, and by noon uh, the storm is making landfall on the southwest coast of Ireland, and you can uh, see with the wind profile here, the uh, purple area is 50 knots or higher, touching uh, much of the south coast of Ireland, uh, and then gradually as it moves over the island, you start to see the strong winds spread into the waters between Ireland and England, so the west coast of England getting into gales, and then the low continues up into Scotland from there, crossing uh, northeastward eventually into uh, Norway and Sweden and weakening and dissipating. So this is going to be a very, very powerful storm. You're going to see um, hurricane force wind gusts, uh, I would expect. 
Now, with re regards to rain from this, uh, usually with these systems, when they become uh, non-tropical in nature, the wind field, the rain uh, shield shifts westward. So while there will be some rain from this, the heaviest rains will likely pass to the west of Ireland, west of the storm tracks. I want to be really careful about that because if the storm tracks a little bit further to the east, uh, then uh, you're going to have more in the way of rain. But I think wind is going to be the biggest issue. Now, at the point of landfall, uh, I'm going to pu pull up, I'm going to go back to that wind map, and I'm going to pull up a, a few points uh, right along the south coast. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, too bad. I was hoping that I would get a sounding. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is inland near where it moves uh, moves ashore. Uh, the latitude longitude plot here is 51, almost 52 north, 9.18 west, oh, and it has a uh, southwest wind. I'm sorry, a south southeast wind of 35 knots, uh, being uh, forecast for the surface wind at that particular point, uh, but. Again, we can move this around. I'm going to see if I can get a sounding right on the coast. And here we have it right on the coast. Away from the center, we have a south-southeast wind at 40 knots, just above the ground layer, um, up uh, at about 1,000 feet or so. Uh, there are 70-knot winds being uh, forecasted. And let me get a little bit closer to the low center. And just right along the coast, just offshore, 60 knot winds uh, being forecasted here at the point of landfall. So these are sustained winds, not gusts. So there will be gusts that are higher than that. Uh, Hurricane Debbie in 1961, I, I think for Ireland, goes down as the um, the, the storm that uh, will folks point back to because that was one that did something similar to this and uh, is remembered because it did cause uh, uh, quite a bit of damage to Ireland when it moved on through. Um, this system might be comparable to that. All, all of this is going to ultimately depend on the track. Uh, if it goes, the, the most ideal track at this point would be, of course, offshore to the, to the uh, west. Uh, uh, models have been kind of getting uh, concentrated over bringing it right across Ireland. Uh, some of the models literally bring it, split the island in half in terms of the actual track. And then eventually, again, uh, off the north coast uh, onto the coast of Scotland. So there will be gales for, for uh, Western England for sure. And probably even for the Eastern, uh, I'm sorry, for Eastern, uh, um, boy, I'm getting my East and West confused, the Western shores of England and also the Eastern shores and eventually into Scotland. This would be uh, Monday uh, late afternoon, evening, and into Monday night and early Tuesday. So I'm going to pause this right here, and um, uh, we will uh, uh, go to the chat board, and we'll uh, discuss this a bit further. All right, folks, I should be back now, and you, uh, if I got any audio problems, just uh, somebody let me know. Uh, but uh, indeed, this is uh, quite rare. Uh, this is, as Anthony Orr pointed out in the chat just a little bit, uh, just a little while ago, uh, this is the furthest east uh, we've seen a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, we've seen hurricanes go to the Azores before, but they usually come in from the west. And this one is passing southeast of the Azores. So the whole approach in terms of where this is going uh, uh, with regards to Ireland is um, coming up from the south. Um, I, I, you know, as far as what exactly we're going to have when it comes ashore is, 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 is the big question. Uh, this is going to become... Uh, a post-tropical or you know not extra tropical non-tropical cyclone uh, which means that it'll behave like a winter type cyclone the wind will be the, the strongest winds will be mainly east of the center the uh, the uh, heavier rains will be north and west of the center 
uh, 50 to 60 knot winds right along the immediate coast uh, sustained and would not be a surprise. And because of the fact that we have this forward speed of, of uh, 20 to 30 miles an hour to account for, uh, it's likely that there will be gusts to hurricane force. So I would say that, um, you know, worst case scenario would be, you know, take, take some of your strongest gales that, that have affected uh, Ireland and England and think of it in those terms and maybe take it up a notch from there uh, in terms of what to what to expect. Uh, I also think that since Ophelia has uh, done what it's done so far in terms of strength and with the dynamics in the upper atmosphere, that it might hold on to its tropical characteristics perhaps a little bit longer than what models um, uh, ha are uh, showing. Uh, David Foreman, you're in Northeast Scotland, much, uh, impact on Tuesday. Yeah, it does. It is going to weaken as it moves across Ireland and then eventually into Northern England and Scotland. You will get a weaker version of this by the time it gets there. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm at a disadvantage because I, I've, even though I have always had this sort of natural affinity to British things, <laughs> um, uh, I understand British comedy very well. Um, but British history has always fascinated me. I don't know the geography and I've never been to England or Scotland, although one day I would like to. Uh, but um, you know your area certainly much better than I ever could. Uh, so I, I, you're going to have to, uh, just as I would tell everybody to uh, uh, check with your local uh, weather service, um, government uh, offices uh, in terms of uh, what to anticipate. But you are to, you are going to see it in a weaker state than uh, when, when it moves into the south coast of, of Ireland. Uh, farthest east to achieve a major, Anthony Orr says, at 26.6 west was Hurricane Francis in 1980. So uh, we're talking uh, 37 years ago. These are rare events uh, in, indeed. And, uh, of course, uh, always a high back to James NASCAR fan uh, from Belmore uh, to get the garden furniture sorted. Yeah, I guess maybe that might not be um, a, ba a bad idea uh, to do, to, uh, to uh, get all the loose stuff uh, out. <clears throat> out. And, you know, for Ireland, the uh, storm that really, uh, from, from a historical perspective, in 1961, I believe it was Hurricane Debbie, uh, and uh, there was a, a debate uh, over whether Debbie was uh, more tropical when it hit uh, land. It came ashore as technically an extra tropical storm, but there's always been some meteorolog some debate in the meteorological community over whether it had maintained some tropical characteristics. And, you know, sometimes when these things do become post-tropical, they do tend to keep a, a, a little bit of character. From their from when they were tropical systems, where you know with the winds being tighter near the center. So so I, I, I'm going to just of course we're going to uh, monitor the progress of the uh, changeover from tropical to post tropical. You'll be able to see it on the satellite. It'll take instead of having that circular circular look, it's going to start to look more like a a, a comma shape uh, as uh, <clears throat> North Atlantic cyclones uh, do. Lidl Griffith, I don't know what the record is for the total number of majors, but I bet you now that Anthony Orr has seen that question, he will find the answer for us um, shortly. And Scott Olson, yes, the Irish Sea will probably be a, a, a mess with the wind and the gales. Uh, quite an amazing hurricane season when you think about it. Uh, all the things that have happened this year, the two Category 5 hurricanes, Irma being uh, having a Category Category 5 status for 60-odd hours in a, uh, consecutively. Um, uh, Maria that followed uh, slamming into uh, Puerto Rico as a borderline Cat 5. Uh, you had Jose, which was almost a Cat 5, uh, was a strong Cat 4. Harvey, um, a Cat 4. Um, Lee, although a small hurricane that never impacted anyone, anybody out in the Atlantic. Uh, briefly achieved major hurricane status, and now we have this as our sixth major. I, I have to go back and look at 2005 because I know that was a year with a lot of majors to see, uh, you know, if we've passed um, that number. Um, Steve Addy, uh, uh, predictions of wind and rain in the models based on generalizations of a rare event or pure meteorological physics. Uh, the second part of the equation. 
Um, there's some climatology in there, of course, but uh, the models, it's pure meteorological physics uh, that we're talking about here. So um, it, it's, it's, I understand where you're coming from with this, because when you see rare events, you wonder how models handle them. Uh, because they just don't show up so often. Well, well we're about to find out. Um, I have to say, you know, this year, on the whole, models, you know, they, they, they have actually performed quite well, um, They, uh, the, the, especially inside the short range. Of course, you know, we were micromanaging Irma with 20-mile movements, which I think is within the margin of error, certainly. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I think the models on the whole have done pretty well. So I think, you know, also the fact that the European, the Canadian, and the GFS overnight uh, were all very, very close to each other um, leads me to have a, a fair amount of confidence uh, in all of this. Uh, good morning to you, Corey. Good to see you here, by the way, and to Dio. Uh, nice to join you. By the way, the super chat <clears throat> is back up. So those a few of you were asking me about that yesterday. So the super chat is back up. And, uh, and working. Um, if you feel like hitting it, by all means do. If not, another time, no worries. Okay. And uh, Anthony has just pointed out that 2005 and 1961 tied for the most majors in a season, seven, uh, and we are at six. So uh, there's always a possibility that there's room for one more between now and uh, the end of hurricane season. Uh, as far as uh, the weather across the United States is concerned, I uh, just want to point out that weather models seem to be hinting at some sort of pattern change uh, for the last week of October going into the first week of November. And we will uh, cover that uh, separately uh, a bit later on. I also am going to load the video part of this um, live stream separately so that if you uh, want to just watch the video and not have to uh, you know, go through the rest of it, um, you can you can uh, go ahead and do that. So I'll be I'll be doing that shortly. All right, everybody have a great day. Uh, we'll update you later on Hurricane Ophelia, and we will of course um, update you on um, the possibility that we could be uh, seeing a, some sort of pattern flip uh, coming in the next uh, two to three weeks. Uh, that'll be exciting to see. Hopefully, uh, it'll mean for some cooler weather for those of you that have been waiting for fall to arrive in the eastern part of the United States. Uh, keep your fingers crossed that that winds up working out. And to uh, all of those of you who are watching from the UK, uh, from uh, Ireland, uh, Scotland, England, uh, Wales, um, I'm actually quite thrilled that, that there are folks watching from uh, that part of the world. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, we'll uh, keep you posted later on on uh, what's happening with Hurricane Ophelia.